I would like to call the Prince William County School Board meeting to order. Number one is approval of the closed session agenda. Motion is in order. Madam Vice Chair. Mr. Trenum. I move that the Prince William County School Board approve the closed session agenda as recommended. Second. We need a second. I second. Discussion? Please vote. Moving on, motion to enter closed session. Madam Vice Chair. Mr. Trenum. I move that pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711, the Prince William County School Board enter closed session for the following reasons. One, to discuss with staff and division Thanks. council the appointments and releases of specific employees under Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711, Alpha 1 and 8. Two, to discuss and consider the qualifications and interim appointment of a qualified candidate to fill the vacancy in the office of chairman at large until November 5th, until the November 5th 2018 special election under Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711 Alpha 1. Three, to discuss the oversight, supervision, and legal duties of the board clerk and deputy clerk, clerk under Virginia Code Sections 2.2-3711 Alpha 1 and 8. Four, to discuss with division council and staff the supervision, performance, and legal issues associated with employee, employment of employee T18-43 under Virginia Code Sections 2.2-3711 Alpha 1 and 8. And five, to discuss with Division Council specific actual litigation under Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711, Alpha 1. Okay. Second. I second. Discussion? Please vote. <coughs> Vote is four yes, unanimous, motion passed. The Prince William County School Board will enter closed session and return to open session in approximately one hour. The Prince William County School Board is now returning to open session from closed session. We're moving to 801. Interim appointment of the chairman at large to the Prince William County School Board. Um, a motion is in order. Madam Chair, Vice Chair. Mrs. Rawson. I'd like to move for uh, Dr. Um, Barbara, Latif. Barbara Latif. Madam Chair. Yes, uh, Ms. Second. Williams. A second. Discussion? Ms. Ms. Rossett, or yes, um, I I found him to be quite knowledgeable of the things that we ask for here at this board, uh, and to protect our students because we would be protecting his, uh, and that's all. I want to move fast. <laughs> um, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my uh, perspective on this is I think it would behoove the system at this point in time to have a fresh face on the board and in addition to that with someone with uh, various board experience uh, and community experience and um, I highly respect and appreciate everyone who put their name in the ring for the running for chair. I have a after going through the experience myself during a special election and appointment and standing before the board and speaking, um, I think it's not only something that speaks uh, highly of that person, it's also uh, something that you have to kind of be a little brave to do. Because um, even as, as accustomed to public speaking as I was, I was still nervous. Uh, it's kind of scary. So I just wanted to thank all of the candidates who put their name in the ring. Um, I don't 
think anyone is more highly than the other. Everyone is different and, and, and individualized in their own way, and I appreciate that. Um, uh, but uh, my choice, as I second the motion, uh, just basically for me, it's the, the depth and level and the variety of experience, as well as having someone uh, that is not already in the system. So thank you. Mr. Trenum. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Uh, first off, I want to echo Ms. Uh, Williams' comments as far as I want to thank all the uh, people that applied. We had a number of very good candidates, um, and, and it, was, it wasn't easy to come down to um, a, uh, or at least me personally, it wasn't easy to come down to who I thought would have been the best or the, even the best couple of them. Um, but uh, I, I do want to just give uh, people a heads up that um, I will not be supporting this motion. Um, Mr. Relative did not meet some of the criteria that I felt were most important, so I won't be supporting that motion. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, yes. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Um, I um, also want to thank all 20 people who applied for this position. It's not easy to be up here in this chair. It's not easy to do the tremendous amount of work that's required. And for 20 people to put in for this position says a lot for the people in our community who are invested in what's happening in our schools, and I do appreciate that. Um, but I will not be able to vote um, for Dr. Latif. Um, I can't, I have a very hard time voting for someone who was one of the top donors for our last chairman, especially after all the disruption we had on this board after the last couple of years. Anyone else for discussion? Ms. Dolch. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, once again, I'd also like to thank uh, the many people who applied. We had uh, 20 applicants with a wide array of backgrounds, and uh, it brings a lot to the board. Uh, all of them had many things to offer. I think uh, some of the things that I was looking for, and I believe I talked to all of uh, the applicants uh, privately on the phone as well uh, to get a feel for them beyond even the speeches we heard uh, the resumes that were submitted and the letters that were submitted along with them. Uh, a few of the things I was looking for were uh, experience running uh, boards uh, to make sure that they can do that essential job as chair um, and ability to work with a, a wide array of people and uh, bring the board forward. And you know, one of the challenges that we've had as a board is um, a, a hyper-partisanship that's marked the, the last couple of boards. And you know, I was I was hopeful uh, that the board could, um, you know, maybe we all could give or take. Uh, and you know, I came with a number of uh, people I was very impressed with, um, and I thought could make uh, a good uh, chair candidate. And I was hopeful maybe we could give or take. Maybe we all get, um, you know, maybe we don't all get our first choice, but we all get somebody we can all be happy with. Um, I, I was disappointed, though, that this motion puts forward probably the most partisan person um, to apply uh, a top Democrat donor, uh, one of the previous chairman's top donors, uh, and someone who stood by during the problems of that time period. Uh, and I think um, that partisanship is something that we could have avoided, um, and uh, I, I wish I wish the board would have would have gone differently. I think we had numerous people that could have helped with the uh, specific uh, things we have coming up in the next six months. And uh, we'll see how things go. I was gonna be good again. I'm not gonna let the partisan shots fly. I, I, I will say, um, I have known Dr. Latif since 2011 um, when I first started becoming involved uh, in public service um, as a teacher in Prince William County. Um, you know, what inspired me about Dr. Latif was not his partisan leanings. It was the good that he gave back to the community and the years of service of the people he treats. It doesn't matter if they're a Republican, Democrat, Independent, Green Party, what have you. These are people he gives back to. And, and I know many of individuals, because we float in similar circles, who are different backgrounds of different partisan persuasions, who have the utmost respect for Dr. Latif, uh, I think you know we're we're taking this to a point. Uh, we're saying we don't want to be political, but we're bringing politics into this. But let's talk about the matter of the service that he's done and, and the leadership that he has exuded on the Board of Regents for the University of Virginia. Uh, again, his service to the community, and I should note that 
he was one of the first to take on perhaps one of the most polarizing figures in this entire commonwealth when he ran in 2011. So I think that's a testament of who he is. I will be supporting Dr. Latif. I guess it's my turn. Um, it's been a long year, and uh, I think that uh, you select a person that you think is honorable, and uh, regardless of their, their political leanings, uh, I just want to have some sense of oneness on this board. I think we owe the public this. And we have gone through a year where, um, you say I have an experience as a chair. I didn't have experience. And I was put in a position where I had to learn to be the chairman. When I became vice, I really didn't think I'd ever become chair. And all of a sudden, there I am with the gavel. But I, I will tell you this. I love this county. I love working for this county. And this county deserves the best. And I think that Dr. Lotif will bring that to the board. I have seen him at so many uh, occasions with his children. Uh, his wife and I worked uh, together down in Richmond. We were selected by the governor. Um, they're very, very dedicated parents uh, and very dedicated to the school system. He was always giving me some advice of, well, why don't you guys think about doing this? Why don't you think about doing that? Well, Dr. Latif, if you're selected tonight, you can come up and tell us what you'd like to do. For all of us on this board, as we go far, go, uh, uh, as we move ahead, uh, I have been honored to be the acting chair on this board, and I ask that we create a sense of harmony and professionalism on this board and uh, the personal kinds of things. We need to leave those in our car or in the dining room. I'm not sure where, but we need to move on because it's all about children. Anyone else? It's time for the vote. The vote is four yes, Jesse, Ralston, Wilk, and Williams. Three no, Deutsch, Satterwhite, and Trenum. Motion passed. Welcome, Dr. Latif. Moving on to the next item on the agenda. Approval of the closed session agenda. The motion is in order. Madam Vice Chairman. Okay. I move that the Prince William County School Board approve the closed session con consent agenda as recommended. I need a second. I second. Discussion? Let's vote. <clears throat> Excuse me, Madam Vice Chair. I'm sorry I didn't hear who seconded that motion. I'm sorry? The vote is six yes, one absent, motion passed. Moving on to closed session, certification of motion is in order. Um, Madam Vice Chair, I think we're gonna go back into the closed session, is that? 
correct? I thought we were going to go in closed session at the end. Right. That means we can't certify it now. We have to come back and certify it afterwards. I'm sorry. I didn't hear. We have to certify it at the end. You wouldn't have, you wouldn't have a quorum to certify. You need to certify now. If Ms. Ralston is going to leave, and she indicated she was, you would only have four. Okay. Uh, then I guess we can go ahead and certify it, but I don't know. Well, they would have a quorum. They'd have four. Yeah, I was going to say, we've got No, we you have would four. have a quorum. You'd have four. Yes. So you, right. Yes. I, but I suggest that you certify now, and then you re-enter at the end of the meeting and, and come out and then recertify. I can draft that motion for you. Okay. That, that, would, that would work. So where are we? <clears throat> a motion to um, for se session certification. A motion is in order. Madam Vice Chairman, I move that pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.2-3712, the closed session of the Prince William County School Board meeting of April 18, 2018, <clears throat> be certified by adopting the following resolution. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Prince William County School Board hereby certifies that to the best of each member's knowledge, one, only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements were discussed in the closed meeting to which this certification resolution applies, and two, only such public business matters as were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting were heard and discussed or considered by the school board. Second. Madam, I second. Discussion. Let's vote. The vote is six yes, unanimous. Motion passed. I would like to call this meeting of the Prince William County, County School Board. Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped one person. We have a presentation tonight by Future Kings and Omega U. And so we will start with both gentlemen can come forward. And if you have students, you can have them sit in front. And we will start with either Future Kings or Omega U. I know these two gentlemen work together, so you can make a decision on that. Please come forward. So, Baker, you, Baker, you, you got to be first. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. Okay, give us your name and your school, please. Uh, my name is Jamal Carter. I'm a senior. I attend Potomac Senior High School. My name is Jamil Carter. I'm also a senior attending Potomac Senior High School. Thank you. All right, before I begin, I would like to thank Miss Lily Jesse for inviting us to speak today. The award-winning Pi Lambda Lambda Youth Academy program has been existing for the past 10 years and has grown to over 125 students in the past two years, serving in the greater, greater Prince William County and surrounding communities under the direction of the Pi Lambda Lambda of Omega Sci Phi. Omega U offers after-school mentoring and studying hall sessions in Dumfries Elementary, Henderson Elementary, George M. Hampton Middle, Potomac Middle, and Potomac Senior High School, Freedom High School, and in addition, Colgan High School. In the past two years, the Mega U program has executed over 100 hours of community service, 300 hours of weekend mentoring events, 280, 280 hours of after school mentoring, and has provided a total of over 150,000 to the students of Prince William County. Students of Mega U have executed 
on student-led Innova blood drives, feeding the homeless, highway cleanup, and annual support of National Public Lands Day at Leesylvania Park, Woodbridge, Virginia. The Omega U mission is to serve, support, and partner with the Prince William County Public Schools, offering a world-class education with after-school and weekend mentoring initiatives that include STEM labs and the Omega U flight drone program, pre-college pre initiative, career readiness, workshops, college, college field trips, and health and sport initiatives. In 2017, Omega U chapter, president of Freedom High School in Woodbridge, Virginia, received a full ride scholarship to attend UVA engineering, majoring in electrical engineering. In 2018, Omega U became a National Society of Black Engineer Junior Chapter in serving Prince William County with partnerships with Virginia State University, Virginia Tech University, Northern Virginia Community College, and George Mason University. Omega U will send seven deserving students from single parent families and with assistance of Spark and Pi Lambda Lambda to attend a one week long engineering day camp at Virginia Tech. Omega U students will live on campus for one week while attending engineering, physics, and science classes with hands-on labs to foster a better understanding and increased knowledge in the areas of science, technology, engineering, and math. Omega U continues to grow and foster a premier youth academy program serving the greater Northern Virginia communities. Omega U is targeted to serve over 200 male students from third grade to graduating seniors. And I'd like to thank you for everybody for allowing us to speak on behalf of Mega U and have a sensational blessed evening. Uh, <clears throat> I, I will address both groups, but if you would remain in front because we'd like to get a group photo. Mr. Frazier, would you like to make a statement? Thank you again for allowing us this opportunity to come and speak. Um, we are absolutely very fortunate to have the students that we have in Prince William County and how we're serving the community and partnering with Prince William County Schools. Um, since taking over the Omega U program, uh, there's a sense of uh, urgency and a sense of collaboration from the parents and principals to help us continue to foster uh, just extra activities for the students to keep them busy, for the kids that don't play sports, just to do uh, wonderful things. So we partner with the Future Kings, Kappa League, the Delta Academy, Delta Gems, where it makes sense. Um, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to have a domestic violence uh, workshop at uh, Freedom High School and Potomac High School, we're partnering with the Department of Social Services, where we're going to, uh, the principals are going to open up um, an assembly so they can come in and speak, as well as where we'll be cooking out for the students at Hampton Middle School for eighth grade to send them off to ninth grade. So uh, we're doing a, a lot of good things in the community. We uh, Gave out $21,000 in scholarships last year, $80,000 in the last two years to students in Prince William County for Pi Lambda Lambda Chapter of Mega Sci Fi Incorporated. So we thank you for the opportunity to come and speak today. Future Kings. I'm Dr. Eric King, and I'll just introduce our group to you, and then I'd like to have a couple of the students to, to speak. Uh, future Kings are engineering great futures. We do that for the purpose of changing lives through STEM education, and the way that we do that is by teaching advanced uh, college-level engineering topics to a young men that are in secondary school. Our program is a 501c3 corporation whose mission is to help uh, boys from underserved communities find success in STEM-based businesses. We started in 2009 as a after-school activity at Hampton Middle School, and through growth and progression, then we did become a 501c3 approved organization. Currently, our program is considered a workforce development program, where we're teaching 21st century workforce skills those skills include things such as financial management, uh, presentation skills, workplace protocols, and a number of other things that, need be, uh, that you need to have in order to be successful in a 21st century workplace. We're also teaching uh, core technology skills. 
Uh, we have specialized programs in cybersecurity, custom engineering, computer game design, and biomedical sciences. The, and each of the young men uh, is trained in both the 21st century, in all the 21st century skills. And then they get to select one of those additional training programs. Uh, we have been uh, blessed to have some outstanding young men in our program. We target young people who are economically challenged. Everyone in our group is not economically challenged, but we do try to find young men that are highly skilled, highly motivated, and need a role model in order to show them the way toward career success. And we have no trouble finding those types of young men uh, that we can serve, and then we expect to turn them back to the community as tremendous assets. Among our graduates, we have graduates that attend Morehouse College in Atlanta, University of Virginia, uh, University of West Virginia, and, uh, and Norfolk State. We have uh, a number of things that we have, that we do in, in support of the community, but we have three major events each year. One is a Black History Gala, uh, where we celebrate the accomplishments of the young people in our community. A second one is our STEM summer camps, where we uh, open our organization up to uh, people throughout the community who would like to get those types of technical skills that we provide to our young men. And then the third thing we do is a technology expo. We have strong collaborations with other organizations in the county. Um, our strongest collaboration is with Northern Virginia Community College that uh, actually houses us. Among the award winners that we have, uh, one of the award winners is here. Uh, Owen James scored a 600 on his Algebra SOL when he was in eighth grade. That's an unusual accomplishment. We have uh, Sierra Sil Silvera, who is not here today, who won the science fair with Pond Middle School. And then finally, we have Norvin West, who is a member of our group, who scored in the 99th percentile of his PSAT. Before he got his scores back, his mother was very upset with him because he did not take his calculator to the test, and he took the test without a calculator and still scored the 90th percentile. So we're very proud of the young men that are in our organization. Although uh, we, we know that they start with a number of skills and services and motivations, and we're just proud and happy that we can uh, continue to build them and grow them. Uh, our second strongest collaboration is with Omega U. Uh, the interaction between our two groups has been a really, very strong uh, and positive relationship, and we think it's becoming a model that other nonprofits in the community could, could follow. We have an open invitation for others to work with us, especially young nonprofit groups that are trying to uh, service the type of demographic that we've targeted. And finally, we are active members of the Chamber, the Prince William County Chamber of Commerce. As part of that collaboration, we actually uh, sponsor the Education Innovation Committee. So we get a chance to work with a number of uh, businesses and other organizations throughout the community. So we try to be strong partners in the community. And we also, but we never lose track of the mission, which is to serve the young men uh, who desperately need the types of uh, guidance, role model, and support that we want to provide. At uh, this time, I'd like to ask one of our longtime members, uh, Owen James, to speak, uh, just to tell you something about why he's been in the program. And then we'd like to end with Mr. Zion McNeely, who is relatively new to our program, and he'll tell you why he went to join. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Uh, my name is Owen James. I'm a my name is Owen James. I'm a sophomore at uh, C.D. Hilton High School, and I've been in the program for four years now. I've been in there since back when it was an after-school program at Godwin Middle School, um, and then things happened, and then we had moved to Nova, where we, as Dr. King had mentioned, formed a very strong partnership. 
I originally joined Future Kings because of my friends. I had some friends in the program. They told me to join, so I went along and joined. So that's why I joined, but I ended up staying because of the opportunities that it had opened up for me, which is probably what I like best about the program. It gives us chances to go to different colleges. And just recently, we went to Pennsylvania for a Nesby convention. So it's a lot of different things that we really get the chance to do that you don't get the chance to do anywhere else. And other places, they really make you pay an arm and a leg, but with Future Kings, they do their best to make it affordable for everybody so that way everybody can get an equal chance to get ahead. Um, I learned with Future Kings how to have more of a business mindset. I can look at things from a different perspective and see, okay, what can this do for me? What can I do to make this something good for me and make it benefit me? I even can put that into my schoolwork I can look at my work and see, okay, can I do this and benefit from it? If I do this, can this put me ahead somewhere? And that's really a big thing in Future Kings. Future Kings are really good at putting you ahead. We focus with things. We have, they had us get certified in Microsoft Word. We work with 3D printing, a lot of other things uh, such as that. And it really helps you get ahead of your competition because you put these type of things on a resume and it's something that people take a lot of interest in. So putting you ahead of all of your competition is really a big thing that I enjoy about Future Kings and why we'll continue to stay in the program. Uh, thank you. Hello, my name is Zion McNeely. I'm an eighth grader at Mary G. Porter Traditional School and currently enrolled in the Future Kings program. The Future Kings program is an, is an organization that trains the next generation of boys in four special, specialties in STEM education, custom engineering, biomedical science, cybersecurity, and computer game design. I was introduced to the Future Kings through their summer camps in which they showcased video game design, cybersecurity, and 3D printing. At the end of the camp, I was offered an opportunity by Dr. King to do the year-long program. And I gladly accepted because I enjoyed video game designing with my peers and networking. The Future Kings program is beneficial to me because they teach me soft skills such as video, oh, excuse me for a second financial and business planning. Additionally, I am taught life skills such as video game designing and coding. Another benefit is the opportunity to internship with technological companies aside from retail or fast food and the opportunity to gain a certification in video game design, which are both of my goals. Again, I'm Zion McNeely and I thank you for inviting me. Board members, would you like to say something to these young men? Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. I am so proud to have you in my district, in the Neapsco district, and that, you know, it's just wonderful. I, I giggle every time I pass by and I see somebody and I see cars and I'm thinking, oh my goodness. This all came because this guy decided that he would try to get us to change the name of a school. This guy here, so. <laughs> so I need you to say thank you to him because without people reaching out and it's how we help each other. And you're gonna be doing this in just a few years. You'll go off to college, you'll do well, and you'll come back to your community, I hope and you will help, and you will do everything you possibly can. So I am very, very much touched, and Mr. Justin Wilkes is too, even if he doesn't say anything. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Trenum. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Um, I'm speaking because 
I'm the only well, yeah, I like, I'm the only one up here that actually has an engineering background. So um, I've got uh, uh, and I've, I've worked in some of the fields that you you've already you mentioned up in your slide. I've worked in cybersecurity. I've worked in uh, not video game design, but software development, and that's with a mechanical engineering background. So I just want to uh, uh, commend you all on this, and just just let you know that you know you, at some point somebody's going to pigeon try and pigeonhole you as as the, as the tech guy or the engineering kid or whatever. And don't let that happen because the engineer an engineering a, a strong technical background can open up a world of opportunities that are that will take you in directions that you may not have that you may have never dreamed, and it's a, it can be a wonderful adventure. So just congratulations. Thanks for coming out. Mr. Wilkes. Ms. Ralston, <laughs> when are you going home? <laughs> um, I, I, both groups, uh, thank you, uh, the Future Kings and Omega U, uh, especially in the sense of Omega U, you guys, uh, a lot of you are in my schools in the Potomac District, um, and, uh, and and Future Kings, uh, the great work you are doing. I, you know, I'm a big champion of college and career readiness and the idea of fostering and really building our youth to take on the skills and the jobs of the 21st century. And I think these are great programs and a great way to get youth involved and really start thinking about their future. So I thank the sponsors and all of you for coming tonight and being part of this uh, presentation. Thank you. Our, our student to you. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I had the pleasure of talking to some of you guys, especially people from Omega U, before the meeting started. And your achievements carry beyond a piece of paper in your demeanor and the way that you smile and greet people and the way you carry yourselves. And I am so honored to be able to, to um, be one of your peers. And I, I firmly believe that we are the generation that is going to change the world. And I think that's evident right here. Um, and I am, I'm so so glad to be able to be part of that generation with you guys because you guys are what makes our, our generation something exciting. Thank you, Ms. Arnold. Thank you, Ms. Arnold. Anyone else? Well, He didn't give his name of his school. The other one. Um, my name is Ramsey Solomon, and I come from George M. Hampton Middle School. My name is Troy Brown. I'm a sophomore at Battlefield High School. My name is Cameron Starr. I'm a sophomore at Colgan High School. Um, I just want to say that um, I'm just very proud to see you guys. You look good, and you look a little shy, but I know you're not shy. <laughs> uh, the Omegas, uh, the, the photos were phenomenal, and I love the, 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 the shirts. I thought you were going to wear the ties tonight. But there are so many groups that are working with students after school, weekends, and our personal goal is to showcase the talent and skills of our kids. I have a quote that I live by, and my thinking on the, when we talk about gaps, I think that sometimes we have a gap in performance and potential. Uh, I went to the Future Kings. I've gone to their ceremony every year. And actually, uh, I had no idea what they were talking about. Mr. Trenum, must, maybe you would know. But these kids are able to speak and use, uh, create, and think, which is what it's all about. And my quote is, the one that I stole from a school in Texas, but I only steal from the best. The quote is, our goal for our students is not for them to be doctors, scientists, business persons, teachers, or lawyers, but rather doctors, science, businessmen, teachers, or lawyers who will change the world. And you guys will change the world. 
So I'd like, uh, Ms. Cromer, are you gonna take the photo for us? Okay, do. Okay, have them come up this way. How are we gonna do, we're gonna stand. How do you guys wanna do, you wanna go down or? You, know, you wanna go down or stand behind? Good job, everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank Ms. Rawson. Dr. Latif. <laughs> we just voted him in, right? And he's talking in the, the audience back there. Anyway, uh, let's, uh, I'd like to call this uh, meeting of the Prince William County School Board to order. Uh, there will be a moment of silence uh, at the request of Ms. Diane Rawson from the Neabsco District. Um, the Pledge of Allegiance. Do we have any students out there? Ah! Come back, my little future king. Oh, I can't see. Okay. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
school are you at? Come on up and tell us your name and your school. My name is Isitu Kamara, and my school is Occoquan Elementary. Um, my name is Rumsey Solomon in George Hampton Middle School. Is everybody here? Okay. Uh, moving on to approval of the public meeting agenda, motion is in order. Madam Vice Chair. I move the Prince William County School Board approve the public meeting agenda as recommended. I need a second. Madam Vice Chair, I'll Mr. second with the proposed amendment. Okay. Uh, I would like to amend the uh, public meeting agenda and add, an item, add one item that the Prince William County School Board re-enter closed session pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711 to discuss with division council and staff the supervision, performance, and legal issues associated with the employment of employee T18-43 under Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711 Alpha, one, and eight. Madam Vice Chair, I'll second that amendment. Discussion? Let's vote. Our, our parliamentarians say we just need to ask if there is any objection to that amendment. Okay. Let's vote. The vote is five yes, two absent. Ralston and Williams motion passed. Adoption of the consent agenda. A motion is in order. Madam Vice Chairman. Mr. Trenum. I move that the Prince William County School Board approve the public meeting consent agenda as recommended. I need a second. I second. Discussion? Let's vote. Vote is five yes, two absent. Ralston and Williams, motion passed. We're now uh, ready to hear from our representative, Ms. Kate Arnold. And is it Megan Sanchez? Uh, it's okay. I don't know if you would like to speak. Would the two of you like to speak also? Uh, okay, Ms. Arnold. 
Alrighty, good evening, everyone. Uh, first, I would like to welcome our new interim chairperson, Dr. Latif. Congratulations on your position, doctor. Uh, I have faith that you will serve your term honorably, working to maintain order on the board and do what's best for the students of Prince William County. I look forward to working with you in upcoming weeks. Now, as I'm sure any senior in Prince William County can tell you, graduation is rapidly approaching. I mention this because something I have continually heard from students is that while they know that PWCS staff cares about them, they would like to see that caring expressed more often and in more concrete ways. Our seniors are currently facing their first major adult decision. Be it picking a college or entering a career field, they are about to take their first steps into the real world. Because of the high levels of stress associated with this transitional stage, I encourage teachers, counselors, and administrators to make an extra special effort to reach out to their seniors. Even the slightest word of encouragement can go further than you can ever imagine. During this daunting time in their lives, our students need us now more than ever. Now, my, myself, I am a part of the group also preparing to graduate, uh, but I still have plenty of activities planned as I enter the final stretch of my term as student representative. The activities I am most excited about are the upcoming student town halls. These town halls are the most fulfilling part of my position as student representative, and the best and most productive way for me to hear student opinions in order to best represent the opinions of students. Tomorrow, I will be hosting the Aquacon District Town Hall along with Ms. Jessie, beginning at 6 p.m. at Woodbridge High School. After that, our three final town halls of the year are the Woodbridge District Town Hall on May 9th at Freedom High School, the Neapsco District Town Hall on May 15th at Garfield High School, and the Brentsville District Town Hall on May 24th at Brentsville High School. Seniors, these town halls may be your final chance to make your voice heard and work to improve Prince William County before you graduate, so please take advantage of this opportunity. In this past week, I have had the opportunity to speak to Ms. A.J. Phillips of the Information Technology Department to address the many questions and concerns that students have uh, pertaining to technology in Prince William County. We had a very productive conversation and I thank her profusely for her willingness to hear the concerns of students. Finally, I would like to conclude my time tonight with our student spotlights. It is my pleasure to spotlight Emily Elston tonight, a junior from Hilton High School. Emily served as the 2017-2018 president of the Virginia Children of the American Revolution, and she recently presided over a statewide Children of the American Revolution conference. She also led the state project, working to fundraise for the replacement of steps and stairwells in the Virginia landmark of the 1774 Poic Church in Loudoun, Virginia, in Lorton, Virginia. Along with other CAR members, she sold pins and t-shirts, contacted organizations, and worked to gain donations for the updates to the building on the National Registry of Historic Places. In total, CAR members raised $15,000, and thanks to a $12,500 gift, um, they have raised a total of $28,000 for this renovation project. Emily's friends describe her as smart, hardworking, and kind-hearted. She is a leader that makes us PWCS proud. I would also like to recognize two students from Freedom High School this evening. Best friends, Alexa Zaldivar and Genesis Villanueva met in their freshman drama class. And now, as juniors, they are an unstoppable duo. They recently won state awards in the VHSL State Forensic Championship Tournament, Alexa placing second in the original oratory category, and Genesis winning third in the poetry interpretation category. Their forensic coach, coach speaks highly of both of them, praising their work ethic and their talent. Congratulations, ladies. We are so very proud of you and thrilled for all you're doing within Prince William County. Thank you so much to Ms. Diana Guletta for putting the accomplishments of these students on the PWCS website for all to see. Administrators, a great way to get involved in your students' lives is to seek out students that you would like to see spotlighted at board meetings. If you wish to spotlight any of your students, please send me the information to do so. That wraps up my remarks for this evening. Thank you for your attention, and I hope to see you all tomorrow at Woodbridge High School. Thank you, Ms. Arlen. Mr. Sanchez. Thank you. Good evening, members of the school board and Dr. Waltz. Firstly, let me take the time to congratulate the newest member of the school board, Dr. Latif, the newly appointed interim school board chairman. With a school division whose potential is as large as it in rural population, I wish him the best of luck in serving our students, faculty, teachers, and parents. I know for our seniors, it is a very exciting time as most colleges have announced their admission decisions and students decide by the end of the month what their future will entail. Beyond our college bound and our technical education scholars, our county is also home to many brave and courageous patriots that have decided to serve their county in the most honorable sacrifice imaginable, enlisting in the military. I wish all our seniors that they keep up the good work and finish the year strong. 
Last weekend, students from Potomac, Forest Park, Stonewall, Brentsville, and Battlefield, among others, competed in the 2018 Virginia Future Business Leaders of America State Leadership Conference. Over the course of two days, our state's future business people gave their all in their competitive events, networking opportunities, and moments of triumph as they made their local chapter, school, and division proud. As the regional vice president for our Germana region that covers Prince William County, it brings me incredible joy that our county was well represented throughout the conference. I congratulate our uh, winners and also those who will compete at the National Leadership Conference this summer in Baltimore, Maryland. Great job, guys. Last but not least, I do wish to recognize a very important student organization in our community. A month ago, I spoke about how important it is to recognize the student-led organizations that are making an impact in their communities but have lacked proper recognition. I asked schools and I emailed all high school principals to submit names of organizations that are making this incredible impact. The principal from Woodbridge Senior High School was the first, Ms. Abney, to recognize one of these organizations. By the time I got to my seat, she had already sent me an email about the great things that the Black Student Union are doing. We live in a time where it's easy to corner ourselves off in subdivisions of society and refuse to listen to and appreciate those who contrast in our beliefs, origins, ethnicities, and whichever other label that we as a society have created for groups of people. It is because of this that it has become incredibly difficult to have an open and honest conversation about the issues that are facing our world. The Black Student Union at Woodbridge brings an open, judgment-free zone for all students to engage in pressing issues and learn more about not only themselves, but others who have agreeing and disagreeing points of views. After the last school board meeting, I attended one of their meetings and was amazed by how interactive and welcoming their organization was. They started the meeting by having students brainstorm, create, and perform a skit in which they addressed the issue that was discussed throughout the meeting. Afterward, an open discussion was held about the contents of the skits and how best to address it from all sides of the aisles. You will see their involvement through Woodbridge's Multicultural Night and their Black History Month celebrations, where they are true leaders in their communities and making an incredible impact. I wish to thank their president, uh, Tata, as well as your sponsors, uh, Mrs. Evan and Principal Miss Amy, for allowing me to catch a glimpse into their amazing work they're doing. You guys are amazing. Um, I will also be visiting in the first week of May, Battlefield's Acts of Random Kindness Club and The Best Club to share their respective stories as well. Principals, staffs, and sponsors are still encouraged to learn more about how to nominate their student-led organization by sharing what makes their club impactful via email to S-A-N-C-H-E mm18 at pwcs-edu.org. Thank you and good night. Thank you, Mr. Sanchez. <laughs> Mr. Pangeri, did I, not tonight, okay, thank you. Well, we're moving on to citizens' comments. Uh, I want to, um, I, before we make the comments, I need to make a statement from, the, from the, here. Um, the board knows that there is a great deal of interest in the status of the external review of the environment at Ronald Reagan Middle School. The independent consultant has, completed, has now completed his work and given board members a confidential briefing. We will need to look at the details and talk to, with the superintendent and key staff to give the matter careful consideration, the careful consideration everyone expects. All stakeholders will be told of any decision as soon as possible. Now, it looks like we have 11 individuals uh, just signed up. I don't have anyone sign up at the door. Um, everyone who did sign up, you all signed up in advance, so you will be allowed to speak. Um, if we are still within the 30-minute window, we will go forward with the remaining speakers at the door. I will call... I, I think I'll just call the 11 names that we have here. You will have three minutes to speak and, I, and uh, the, the clerk will keep time. The lights on the monitor will indicate your progress. The yellow light will signify that you should sum up your position. Red light, red indicates your time is up and you should stop. Please use proper decorum and manners while, the, uh, while at the podium. If you do not do so, you'll be asked to step aside. Please give your name, address, and uh, for the record, when you approach the podium. Our first speaker is Jennifer Roberts. So Jennifer Roberts, Brandy Prezano, Rachel Ellis, Jennifer, Jennifer, I see you're listed twice, Susan Etheridge, 
Crystal Bolzer, Raleigh O'Casey, Richard Jesse, Kiana Kane, Morgan Swindle, and Stephen Vender. So we'll start with Jennifer. Hi. Good evening. Uh, Vice Chairman uh, Jesse, Dr. Waltz, members of the board, Ms. Arnold, and uh, the new uh, chair of the board as well. I'm Jennifer Roberts, school librarian at Patriot High School, and my address is on file with the clerk. We are in the middle of April, which is school library month, and have just celebrated National Library Week, and I know that you have probably been out in the schools reading to students. Um, it's been quite a journey from where I started out in western Kansas years ago to Prince William County. Um, there have been many changes in libraries over the years, but as I get ready to retire at the end of this year, the thing that stays the same is making connections with students. I am often asked if we really need school libraries anymore, since kids have Kindles and eBooks and computers, and students can just Google anything that they need to look up. But our libraries are more vital than ever and in no danger of going away. Today's libraries look and feel a lot different, but students are still using them to make connections. Students are still reading and come to the library to check out books, but they do much more too. Come into our library before school and you will see that it is full of students getting ready for the day, and it can get a little noisy too. The library is the heart of the school and serves every student. The library is where students are learning to use digital resources like the ebooks and online databases that allow our library to extend outside the physical space. Highly trained librarians are experts in teaching students how to access information and literature and how to evaluate what they find and how to use the information that they locate efficiently and ethically. These resources are available to students 24 hours a day seven days a week and 365 days a year. Students can read, research, write, and publish right on their own phones or tablets, but the library is where they learn to do that. I'm always curious to see how students feel about their experience with the high school library, and I'm very pleased that every graduate that I've ever spoken to over the years say that they have felt very prepared for research that they have faced later in college. I would like to end with an anecdote about something that happened last week. A group of girls came into the library after school so that one of them could print something, and they noticed a book that we had on display, and they started de debating whether the book was better than the movie. This happens a lot, um, but I was surprised that all of them seemed to have read the book, which, which was nice. As they were leaving, one girl said, well, if you like that one, you should read her second book. And then she turned to me, and these are not her exact words, but she said, I really liked the, the second book. It was good. And it was the first book that I've ever read that had an Asian main character. I was very pleased about the connections. Ms. Roberts, were... I'm sorry your okay. time is up. All right, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Provenzano. Good evening, school board members and administrators. Tonight, I am here again as a Reagan parent, but speaking on behalf of many in my community who continue to be frustrated at the lack of action and leadership displayed through this entire ordeal. In your 2016 to 2020 strategic plan, which this board approved in June of 2015, the division says it has a 2020 vision for a world-class education. 2020 vision suggests looking at a situation methodically with care and following protocols that have been established. 2020 vision suggests seeing what is in front of you, even if it is not pleasant. 2020 vision suggests seeing a situation from every angle, not from a narrow perspective. And finally, 2020 vision suggests clarity and transparency. Goal number two in the 2020 vision is climate. It states the teaching, learning, and working environment is safe, caring, and healthy. Goal number three in the 2020 vision says family, 
community and employee engagement create an environment focused on improved student learning and work readiness. Goal number four in the 2020 vision states, recruit and hire highly qualified instructional personnel. Key strategies in the 2020 vision include making decisions based on what is best for our students, providing proactive two-way communication, recruiting, developing, and retaining highly qualified employees, involving the community, providing a safe and orderly work environment for students and employees. And last, but definitely not least, engaging in effective management practices to include clear direction, quality methods, and an integrated system for coordinating all efforts. Prince William County board members and leadership team, I ask you tonight to please reflect on the goals that you have set for yourself. Parents, community members, voters, potential and current staff members are watching and waiting for you to make good on your word. Is your vision for Prince William County Schools truly 2020 or is there a myopic viewpoint threatening the integrity of our ability to truly provide students and their families with the world-class education they deserve? Thank you. Thank you. Rachel Ellis. My name is Rachel Ellis and my address is on file with the clerk. I am again speaking as a concerned parent of a Reagan student and a longtime resident of Prince William County. Until recently, I've been fairly uninformed of how the school board and the superintendent's office works. I've never had a reason to become involved. But now my eyes are wide open and I cannot ignore what I have seen or heard is happening in this county. With the Reagan situation, it seems at every corner there is secrecy, manipulation, and intentional stall tactics coming from the superintendent's office and also the school board. When you are aware of the same allegations being made over a 13-year time span in two other schools, the fact that this behavior was ever allowed to continue is unimaginable. How does Prince William County Schools claim to have zero tolerance for bullying for students, yet they have allowed this behavior to flourish within the administration of these schools? As an entity, the school board receives over 57% of the general revenues, our tax money. There should be a higher standard of behavior expected for our administrators. They should always treat people with respect and honor. Yes, hard calls have to be made, but threatening, intimidating, belittling behavior should never be acceptable and certainly should not be rewarded. The other day, I was reviewing checks and balances with my daughter. What a great analogy. You have the superintendent's office, which seems to answer to no authority. You have the school board, which is elected by the people, but seems unable to control or have any real influence over the superintendent's office. No real checks and balances. But now, now you have the parents. The parents are awake and are disgusted that our teachers are being treated this way. The parents are ready to challenge the unchecked monster that lurks in Prince William County Schools, intimidating teachers for speaking up for themselves or for the students. The monster that silences their opinions in special education meetings. The monster that stifles creativity and neglects the expertise of these educators. The monster that failed to reach out to Reagan teachers and investigate until the parents demanded it. The monster that cannot be trusted to produce a truly independent investigation in a reasonable time frame. The monster that has allowed 13 years to go by without addressing these behaviors. I've had some board members respond to my emails indicating that they do not interfere in matters in other districts. I can appreciate that response. But the fact is that there is still no resolution to Reagan that doesn't reflect on the board as a whole. Teachers, staff members, and ultimately parents in every district are watching how the superintendent's office is dragging their feet on this, and the board is taking no action to bring it to resolution. Remember, the lack of action is seen as action. As a parent, I know that it is the teachers in any school that drive the students' achievements, whether it is SOL test scores, science fair awards, or recognition as a school of excellence. It is the daily effort of our teachers, together with the students, that win these types of recognition. The teachers have been making it work for Reagan students despite the toxic environment that they are in. They have been shielding our children from the lack of leadership within Reagan and ultimately within Prince William County. To those teachers and staff members, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Roberts, I have two different addresses uh, for another. Is this the same, Roberts? Or is there a second? I want to make sure. 
Did you have two addresses on file? Okay, okay. S Susan Etheridge. Hello, board members. My name is Susan Etheridge, and my information is on file. I'm here tonight to speak to you again about bullying in our county. And like you, Ms. Jesse, and some others, it makes me feel sad because I really love this county. But I feel a need to tell you a little bit about what I know that's going on. Uh, I have a first count, first-hand account of a school in our county to talk about. In November, an experienced special education teacher quit. She broke contracts. She walked away. In December, a really fabulous, experienced teacher, she was bullied and she retired on the spot. In January, a special ed TA quit, which nobody really cares about. In February, an LD special ed teacher quit. She was a career changer. She couldn't even get enough support to finish her first year of teaching. Sad, four teachers from the same department. Two other teachers from different departments also quit. You'll hear administration say things like, well, we need to clean house, we need to weed out some of these bad teachers. Mm -hmm, yeah, right. Well, when six teachers walk away, shouldn't this send up a red flag to someone? It means that there's a problem with one or more administrators in that school. Did any of you know about it? Did anybody investigate this? Do they have to tell you, or is it just part of the site-based management? Grievances are, grievances are filed, letters are written, surveys are taken, teachers are putting in for transfers. All of these are red flags. Threats, I know some of you are confused. What does a threat look like to a teacher? Well, I can tell you because I received some and I can give you some examples. My first threat, you will not talk to the principal. You will keep everything in house. Number two, you will not talk to OSE. They do not need to be included or involved in our business. Number three, get those kids out of the gen ed classes because they do not have the right to be included. Uh, number four, I was even told that I needed to stop being so honest with my parents. Don't talk to the parents, but have a great partnership with them. So what happens when you don't agree with administration? Well, you get threat, threats that you're gonna get a uh, letter of concern in your file, you're going to get placed on an action plan. And they even use your name, Mr. Bigsby, and they say, Mr. Bigsby said that I have to do this. So we're on the onset of a shortage of teachers across the nation. We have 57 jobs in SPED open next year, and that's just a start. Many are not filled this year. In Pennsylvania, they pay their SPED teachers more. In Maryland, they give bonuses to their SPED teachers. What does Prince William County do to retain their teachers? give them huge caseloads, and give them lots of threats and action plan with very little support. Thank you. Christo Balzer. Riley O'Casey. Good evening, board members, Dr. Waltz. My name is Riley O'Casey, and my address is on file. Communication, collaboration, and respect, three qualities of a successful leader, a successful business person, and a successful organization. These qualities should also be a goal for all employees in a school district. Working towards the goal of imp improved communication, collaboration, and respect, the diversity training is a step in the right direction. This professional development for our school system reflects a deep respect for our students, families, and staff. The cognitive coaching is another example, as well as the civility and the workplace training. Meaningful leadership training is priceless. As president of the Prince William Education Association, I continue to stand and speak before the board, sharing aspects of life in Prince William County Schools. We hope to expand the communication and collaboration with Prince William County Schools to address the changes coming from the state. Reduced SOL testing has led to required alternative assessments. Senate Bill 273 and House Bill 1419 allows this school division 
to determine if recess can be included in our elementary students' instructional day. New graduation requirements go into effect with next year's freshman class. And most importantly, House Bill 1044 requires each local division to adopt policies to prohibiting abusive workplace environments. The Prince William Education Association sees this as an opportunity to provide input and work together to create policies to benefit our employees and to foster a positive learning environment for our students. We look forward to communications. Thank you. Thank you, Richard Jesse. Good evening, <clears throat> my name is Richard Jesse. My address is on file, uh, Madam Chairwoman and Dr. Waltz. Uh, just want to say that, uh, you know, we talk about uh, a lot of things and, and I want to just compliment uh, Mrs. Jesse. Uh, she has been a nationally recognized, successful principal. She had one of the most uh, highly effective schools in this county elementary school, and I would encourage you on the board to listen to her and to understand that she has the kids' interests. Everybody, and Mr. Trenton, I know you like budgets, and, and that's great, but one of our most important things that we need to do in this county is train our kids and get our kids moving in the right direction. You know, bringing these kids into the boardroom tonight was an example of highlighting the success of our kids. But when you look at the situations, we have schools, particularly our Title I schools, that are not doing well. If this was a sporting uh, league, baseball team, football team, you look at the leadership of the schools. And when the schools are not doing well, you need to look at the leadership in that school. And after some point in time, the kids are suffering if they're not getting good grades and doing well on the test. And I would recommend that you look at the principals and do something about it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. J. <laughs> Kiara Kane. Good evening, Dr. Waltz, Acting Chairwoman Jesse, and board members. My name is Kiara Kane, and my address is on file with the clerk. As a board member of the Prince William Education Association, I am speaking on our continued desire to work with the school system on improving the procedures and support for teachers and other staff members experiencing harassment and bullying in the workplace. As teachers, we are trained to keep an eye on students' behavior during the day and notice when a student exhibits signs of being bullied. As a kindergarten teacher, I get to teach my students what appropriate behavior in school looks like and important skills like sharing and teamwork. If a student is being bullied, teachers are asked to intervene and students are given professional support with our hard working school counselors and social workers. But when a teacher experiences stress from a negative work atmosphere or is being bullied by a superior, there is no one but their colleagues to notice the signs. As the harassment continues, the students feel the effects of a teacher battling panic attacks, depression, and even medical issues that come from the prolonged stress. The teacher's family feels it at home as well. But while we encourage our students to tell an adult about their bullying and give them support as a victim overcoming trauma, a teacher is often told they're being too sensitive or unprofessional and is generally ignored by anyone that they contact for help. Almost every teacher has a story for you of either facing bullying themselves or watching those around them be bullied. We've seen targeting teachers with constant unfair criticism and scrutiny all under the guise of observation. We've seen administrators fly through a classroom without notice for five minutes and then writing it up as a formal observation because they lost track of their own deadlines. We have supervisors who base evaluations on parent complaints without ever witnessing an incident or evidence of behavior themselves. Part-time or itinerant teachers who are given unclear expectations and then reprimanded when they fail to follow procedures they were never informed about. But most importantly, in all of these scenarios, we continue to see a system where teachers are criticized and reprimanded but never given a support system to help them improve. 
Please show your employees that you value them, that you understand their struggle to wear the dozens of different hats that are piled on them while still maintaining a positive attitude in the face of unbelievable stress that you recognize the impact of a teacher reaches not only the students in their classroom, but causes a ripple across the building that impacts parents, the community, their colleagues, and up to the administration. As we wrap up last week's Kindness Spirit Week, send a ripple of kindness through your buildings and support the teachers who are alone, who are struggling, and who are looking for a way to demonstrate their enthusiasm and dedication for their students. Thank you. Morgan Swindoll. Hello, my name is Morgan Swindoll and I'm a senior at Colgan High School. Um, you may remember me from last year when I came to present and I am here again today as a member of Y Street. So Y Street is the award-winning youth volunteer program from the Virginia for Healthy Youth, for Foundation for Healthy Youth that focuses on promoting a healthy living in Virginia. And I am here to talk about how Y Street's 24-7 campaign uh, helps Virginia school divisions adopt, implement, and enforce 100% comprehensive tobacco and e-cigarette-free school policies. Under 100% 100% comprehensive policy, tobacco and e-cigarette use, possession, and distribution is prohibited by anyone, anywhere, but at any time. The Prince William County School Division is doing a great job already to committing to the health of students, staff, and visitors. Currently, your policy language reflects what, would, what is required by the state, but we would like to help partner with you to strengthen your policy to close any loopholes and become 100% comprehensive. In your folders are copies of the current tobacco-free policies to use as a reference. I would first recommend, we would first recommend to update the definition of property in your policies. It is, specifies many places where tobacco is prohibited, but there are potential gray areas that, may, that it may not cover. We recommend that the updated policy include all school premises inside and outside, whether owned, leased, rented, or chartered by the school division. And we also want it to include any school-sponsored or school-related event, whether on-site or off-site, to, and to remove the ability for directors to designate smoking areas on the grounds outside school buildings. Second, we, secondly, we would like to prohibit the use and distribution of tobacco, electronic smoking devices, and products containing nicotine by staff, contractors, visitors, whether on-site or off-site. Uh, thirdly, we'd like to expand your, expand your language around the possession and use, use and distribution to include all properties on or off site. And fourthly, we would like to strengthen your definition of tobacco products and tobacco use to include electronic smoking devices and products containing nicotine. By updating your definition of it, it is clear that all policies apply to alternative products. Fifth, we would like to require consequences for visitors. Consequences re, uh, support administra administrators, staff on the ground to um, support this tobacco-free environment. Six, we would like to add a provision to include tobacco-free tobacco signs. Signage helps to further enforce the communication and visibility of your tobacco policy. And finally, we'd like to expand the language to provide referrals and cessation resources for staff and students. And as a partner and a resource to the Prince William County School Division, we have provided our model policy and checklist to provide guidance in revising and adopting this 100% comprehensive policies. And once you decide to adopt a, com a comprehensive policy, the campaign will has great ways to support and implementing and enforcing the policy. And we have um, free signage that we would like to provide to all schools and toolkits for all schools. And the, we would add uh, Prince William County to our official map of comprehensive divisions, and Prince William County would gain positive publicity from this um, addition. And on behalf of Y Street, I thank you for taking the time to learn more about the 24-7 campaign, and I look forward to adding Prince William County to our official map of the 100% comprehensive divisions. Thank you, Morgan. Steve Bender. In trouble. I didn't speak to Mr. Wilk before the meeting. I was going to go off the cuff, but I wore hemmed pants, so. I'm on a bad joke streak this year. <sighs> Members of the board, Ms. Jesse, Dr. Waltz, I am uh, speaking tonight about a couple of things. Obviously, the vote's been taken. Um, I was not in favor of the man that you chose. I had somebody else in mind. Uh, I think uh, there are, 
I, I'm a little troubled, and I've already spoken to Dr. Lafitte about this. I'm, I'm a little troubled about his support in the past for Democrat candidates, and particularly Mr. Sawyers. But he has assured me that he is not going to be Ryan Sawyers. That's a relief, and I look forward to seeing that proved out over the next six months. Um, what I do want to urge all of you is he's gone now. Thank you. And please let's leave with his absence all of the partisanship and the bickering and the 5-3 and 4-3 votes. And let's get back to the way the guys I supported, former members of this board, when you know votes were 7-0 or 8-0 and everybody worked out a consensus and worked together. We need to get back to that, and I think you guys do have the capability. Uh, the thing that stunned me this month is Pete Camlin, of all people, has proposed a tax. Um, I'm not quite sure what planet I'm on now, but he has endorsed a special tax, and he's pushing hard for it with the county board to help alleviate the trailer situation. Now, I know some of you up there are not one of his fans. But I think on this, everybody can agree. If we can find a way to fund a means of getting rid of the trailers, then that's a place where we need to have an 8-0 vote. Because, Ms. Jesse, you are right about that. We have entirely too many trailers in the elementary schools in the east and entirely too many trailers at the high schools in the west. And we need to get a solution that solves it. And this is one way to do it. So please give that serious consideration over the next few weeks. And uh, I know it's some of you, it's just kind of against your character to support anything that Pete's just on general principle that he's in favor of, but you know, think about that one and figure out if it's not something that maybe you can't support. Thanks very much. Thank you. Are there any speakers that I missed? Well, it's time for superintendent's time. Dr. Waltz? Ex excuse me, Mrs. Jesse. Can I ask the board members to refresh and I was also media do that to refresh after. the screen to You want allow us to refresh? I was going to ask them to refresh when we went into closed session. You want us to refresh now? Yes, ma'am, so you'll see the motion to enter closed session. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And if media would refresh the main screen, I'd appreciate it. The board, the board members see the motions I've added? We're good, yes. We're good? Yep. Dr. Walt. Thank you. Uh, congratulations to Dr. Latif for your appointment as chairman at large of the Prince William County School Board. I look forward to working with you. I would also like to thank Vice Chairman Jesse for uh, stepping in and uh, doing a great job over the last several meetings. Thank you very much. So let's start off with continuing uh, my effort to keep the school board and the community aware of the progress and meeting the annual objectives you have assigned to me, first in slide one. As I mentioned before, our scorecard shows a red check mark for items I've already reported on. If the check has a red P after it, that means the reported work remains in progress and a white check means it's an item we'll be discussing tonight. So first up, under the instructional leadership category is the expectation that I work with staff to identify instructional needs and develop action plans based on last spring's reports from our key advisory councils. We covered this at length in a report to the school board back in October. It highlighted a wide array of results stemming from the reports of the gifted advisory council, the superintendent's advisory council on instruction, and the special ed advisory council. 
Without going into lots of detail, I will say that we are continuing to build on many of those recommendations. For example, the Advisory Council on Instruction wanted us to help parents better understand what grades say about subject mastery. And our response is actually going to go further. We've rewritten the grading regulations to embrace the best feedback and grading practices demonstrated in several of our schools. That means that beginning next year, gradebook entries will provide families with better information about their students' performance. Instead of reporting on quiz number one or project number two, we'll be providing more feedback on how students are doing on specific course objectives and what they can do to move toward greater mastery. It will mean more opportunities for students to show what they've learned and how to improve. We'll be rolling out much more on this in the weeks ahead, but it's one of the many examples that demonstrates how we have met the expectation of Indicator 3.7 and used our advisory councils to plant seeds of improvement. Moving to Indicator 5.4, we are one percentage point short of achieving an overall satisfaction rate goal of 85% in how division-wide administrators evaluate the executive administration. Our last division-wide survey said 84% of all of our administrators reported satisfaction with executive administration. That's up one point from the previous year, and I'm also encouraged that the rating given by school-based administrators was 87%. We will continue to work toward improvement. There's one other objective we need to discuss tonight. The board charged me with making sure the teacher turnover rate stays below 12%. For the latest year, teacher turnover was 8.8%. It means that thanks to strong mentoring and support, we are retaining more than 91% of the people who are the most important to the education of our students. And moving on, I have news of big robotics wins for Battlefield High School at Chesapeake District First Championship. Its iLight Team 1885 brought home the Chesapeake District First championship. It won the Chairman's Award, the tournament's most prestigious award, and was the highest ranking team in the Chesapeake District. The Battlefield team earned a spot at the World Championship Games in Detroit next week. Congratulations and good luck to the team, members, sponsors, and coaches led by Dr. Gail Drake. Our school division is producing finance whiz kids, students from Freedom, Patriot, and Woodbridge High Schools, qualified in all three divisions of the championship rounds of the Governor's Challenge in Economics and Personal Finance. Out of 2,300 students, they were among just 140 who qualified for the finals in Richmond on April 20th. Congratulations to Freedom High School's forensic team, which fared well in the State Forensics Championship. Alexa Zaldivar placed second in original oratory, and Genesis Villanueva placed third in poetry interpretation. The Freedom Forensics team tied for ninth place in the state of Virginia. Freedom was the only school in our division to qualify for the state tournament. Best wishes to them and to Freedom's forensics coach and theater director, Mr. Albert Smith. Benton Middle School language arts teacher, Mr. Mark Shiring, was named Advisor of the Year at the Virginia Student Council's Association Conference, recognizing his decades of advocacy and leadership. Benton Student Council also brought home the Achievement Award for the sixth consecutive year. Congratulations to Mr. Shiring and to the young leaders at Benton Middle School. I recently had the privilege of attending Career Day at Saunders Middle School and joining School of Excellence celebrations with several of our school board members at Coles, Buckland Mills, Patty, and Piney Branch Elementary Schools. All the events were very impressive and the honors were well deserved. I encourage everyone to come to Hol Colgan High School on Saturday, April 28th for our school division's Fine Arts Festival. More than 10,000 pieces of artwork created by our talented students in all grades across the county will be on display. And I want to thank ahead of time all the art teachers for their great instruction and all the time and energy it takes to display all of that work for, our, for the art show. Visit the auditorium throughout the day to also watch performances by drama, choral, orchestra, and percussion ensembles. 
Congratulations and thanks to more than 244 employees who are retiring this year. I look forward to personally honoring them at the reception and ceremony next Tuesday at Colgan High School. We would not be where we are as a school division without your dedication and expertise. I wish all our retirees the best as they move toward a great new chapter in their lives. And finally, congratulations to Vice Chairman Lily Jesse. She was just honored by the Prince William County Chapter of the National Coalition of 100 Black Women. Ms. Jesse is the recipient of the Courageous Generation Women's Leadership Award for promoting and enhancing the quality of life through political and non-political processes. Thank you. Uh, board members, board matters. Uh, let's start on this end. Shocked you, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Uh, the uh, highlight of the last week uh, was uh, about half the board got to go to the National School Board Conference. Uh, it was a great time uh, spent working together and learning uh, from a number of districts uh, across the country, uh, learning from other board members, administrators, uh, and uh, Definitely a very useful, uh, useful time. I uh, want to uh, make a couple announcements about a couple of upcoming activities. Uh, Coles Elementary School has a uh, festival on Friday uh, that their PTO is hosting. Uh, should be a, a fun time uh, for the community. Also on Saturday morning, uh, and I think the event at Coles starts around six o'clock. Uh, Saturday morning about 10 o'clock is the Kyle Wilson uh, annual walk. It's the 11th annual walk hosted at Hilton uh, High School by the Kyle Wilson PTO. Uh, exciting time as well uh, with the community coming together. So look forward to seeing people at both of those events. Uh, this week uh, we had uh, the passing of uh, a very uh, incredible person in the life of our country, uh, namely Barbara Bush. Uh, and I just wanted to share a couple of thoughts from her life. Uh, one quote that I've seen recently that struck with me is uh, where she stated, your success as a family, our success as a society, uh, depends not on what happens in the White House, but what happens in your house. And at the core of what we do here, uh, the strength for all of our students is our families, uh, the family involvement, um, the active participation of families and community groups um, in the life of our, our community. Uh, and she also stated uh, to teach children to read and to write, um, teach children to read and write, and many of our problems will be solved. And she dedicated a lot of her life to literacy and making sure that every student had that opportunity. And these are essentials uh, for all of our students, for every citizen of our community, and sets them up on a critical pathway for the future. Uh, one uh, request I have um, for the next meeting uh, is we've seen a thanks to activity uh, from members of our county uh, changes to how we handle uh, changes in the state law to uh, recess and we've uh, you know it's a it was a uh, lesson in activism in terms of learning how the process works and how to go about making change uh, but in light of the state law there needs to be changes to how we do things uh, here in the school division to allow for more recess. And so I would like to have on the agenda for the next meeting a uh, item for discussion about increasing recess time here in the school division in light of the uh, state laws that were passed. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Wilkes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Jesse. Uh, a couple of quick announcements. Uh, congratulations to uh, former principal Kirsten Fisher and uh, current principal RJ Lecciati at um, Patty Elementary for their School of Excellence event. I had the pleasure of attending that along with Mrs. Satterwhite and former school board member Mrs. Covington, Dr. Waltz, Mr. Erickson, amongst others. Uh, great event, 10th uh, time Patty has been awarded that event. A couple other events I attended. Uh, last Saturday, the uh, uh, Special Education Parent uh, Teacher Advisory Committee uh, hosted a great event at the Art, uh, welcoming Secretary of Education Adif Carney and the Associate Superintendent of Special Ed in the Virginia Department of Education. It was a great event. It was streamed online. Great questions. Uh, citizens were able to answer questions about special ed policy uh, at the state level. 
Uh, I also had the opportunity uh, to attend the Dumfries Triangle Quantico Little League Baseball Day, uh, opening day this past Saturday. Beautiful Saturday. Uh, last two years have been rained out, so it was great to be there. I also attended another night, uh, Patty's Fourth Grade Art Night. I also had a sneak peek of Forest Park's uh, upcoming production of The Little Mermaid, which begins tomorrow night and Friday and Saturday. Um, I would be remiss. It is my wife's production, um, so I will be there on Friday night for sure. Um, but I encourage everyone else to attend. Uh, it's been a lot of work these last uh, couple of months, uh, especially the last couple of weeks, the late rehearsals. Um, so I uh, want to recognize her and Laura Britton, uh, the choir director of Forest Park. Also made a couple school visits uh, to Ashland Elementary along with Mrs. Satterwhite, um, Forest Park, Triangle, and Grand Park. Uh, looking forward to visiting more schools uh, the next couple weeks. Thank you so much. Mr. Trenum. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. I'll try and be quick. I do want to congratulate uh, the principals at Piney Branch Elementary School, Buckland Mills Elementary School, and Victory Elementary School on their uh, School of Excellence celebrations. I had the pleasure of attending all of those along with Ms. Hart. And uh, Dr. Waltz with, uh, hit a couple of those as well. Um, she also had the pleasure of uh, meeting with the Chris Young um, Elementary School's Advisory Council and discussing with them just yesterday evening on uh, a number of issues. Uh, that's always enjoyable, so I always appreciate the invitations. See, I think I've got Glen Kirk Elementary that's coming up, and I think I've also uh, uh, back at Chris Young again as well this week. So. Um, I want to congratulate Dr. Latif on his appointment to the interim, uh, interim uh, chair position. I hope we have a nice, calm, drama-free uh, remainder of the school year. Thank you very much. Y'all have a good evening. Thank you, Ms. Jesse. Um, I've been pretty busy lately, and uh, one of the great events that I was able to attend was Smart Beginnings for Tomorrow's Workforce, Strengthening the Workforce of Today, Building the Workforce of Tomorrow, sponsored by Smart Beginnings. And um, it was a great gathering of business leaders in the community talking about preschool, and it was very exciting about the opportunities that um, working together that we can provide for our community and for the future. And uh, part of that led to something else that I did the next day. Um, I was able to take a tour of Lockheed Martin. It was their Minorities and Engineering Day. And I also received a briefing on the opportunities Lockheed Martin offers to our students when they're postgraduates of Prince William County Schools. And I want to make sure that our teachers, our guidance counselors are aware of the programs that Lockheed Martin offers. For students who are attending a four-year college university and looking for a summer internship, they do offer internship opportunities. And for students who are not going straight to college or aren't sure they want to go to college, they offer apprenticeship opportunities. So there are students who are grad have graduated from Prince William County Schools or are graduating from Prince William County Schools who are going straight to work for Lockheed Martin and are getting clearances as soon as they graduate and turn 18. So I just want to thank Lockheed Martin for being so forward thinking and providing opportunities for our students to actually have a living and go straight into the career and workforce as soon as they graduate. It was a very, um, very terrific um, tour. Uh, the opportunities they're providing for our students are outstanding. They're creating a program that shows national leadership, and I hope we can see more of that in Prince William County. Um, also, it was exciting to see the students who were there for the engineering day to finish up with their projects. It was a room full of some of Prince William County's greatest, and um, it was very exciting. So I want to thank Melissa Banks. Um, I also want to thank um, Mr. Jack Gellin for their hospitality for that event. I um, was able to speak on Mr. Deutsch's behalf at Coles Elementary School, School of Excellence. I want to congratulate Coles Elementary School on achieving a, another School of Excellence there. We had a lot of fun. And I also want to congratulate Colgan Theater for their production of Hairspray last weekend. And um, Dr. Waltz didn't mention it, but his daughter was also in the production. The cast was absolutely outstanding. And as Mr. Wilkes pointed out, there's another production this weekend with Forest Park High School. There was a piece that was put out in Prince William County School News a few weeks ago that highlighted different productions that happened last weekend. A lot of them are also coming up this weekend. So if you have not had a chance to attend a Prince William County High School production of a musical or a play, please check out that schedule. Go and see something this weekend. Our students are absolutely fabulous. Thank you very much. I'm reading uh, the board matters for Ms. Williams, uh, and she wants you to know that due to a family emergency, uh, she was forced to depart the meeting early, and she sends her apologies. Uh, she wanted me to 
highlight the following items. She was able to attend the diversity and inclusion event hosted by the National Coalition of 100 Black Women, and she wants to thank them for hosting the event and extending the invitation. At the event, Ms. Jarslyn Hart represented Prince William County with the utmost professionalism. Uh, thank you. Overall, the event was well attended, and I look forward to attending in the future, future events. Thank you to all of the elementary schools hosting a kindergarten registration. Uh, special shout out to Featherstone on behalf of my family. Uh, three, I was fortunate enough to attend the National School Board Association annual conference. I was able to learn so much on the ever-changing world of education. In addition, I came back with the information to share with the board on the Osbuzman uh, position. More details to follow. And four, finally, the par for parents and students, hang in there. We are entering the final stretch of the school year. Hold tight, stay focused, study for those SOLs and final exams. Uh, my speaking notes, uh, I did not attend the um, conference in uh, Texas. I did attend a leadership conference in uh, Las Vegas and was able to meet some outstanding presenters. They say what happens in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas. However, Dr. Um, Dr. Dr. Anthony Muhammad, the author of this book, and he's just written a book on uh, closing the achievement gap, he is a successful presenter, has worked in Australia, China, Singapore, Singapore and Australia. Um, and I will be working with Mrs. Taylor, our PD supervisors, because he has agreed to come back to Prince William, come to Prince William County. He is the most sought after presenter and an author, as an author also, he has is, is indicated his willingness to come to Prince William. I'm hoping that we'll be able to arrange that. I also attended the Educational Equity Conference in Chesterfield. It was one of the hot topics for the Virginia Board of, Ed, of, of uh, Board members. Uh, the Equity Committee in, uh, was on equity, educational equity. The Equity Committee in Roanoke uh, has raised his graduation rate in a lower income minority school from 57% to 90, 91. Uh, in fact, the gap has pretty much been erased. Presenting was Dr. Constant, Steve Constantine, I think he worked in Prince William, who is the acting state superintendent, the superintendent from Fairfax, uh, superintendents from Fairfax, Williamsburg, and Virginia Beach, and the school board chair from Norfolk, and vice chair from Roanoke. Uh, it's an area that we really need to look at as we get on this equity journey, because I think we've got to be on it for quite some time. And at this point, we are, I need a motion to go back into closed session. Madam Chair, I move that the Prince William County School Board re-enter closed session pursuant to Virginia Code 2.2-3711 to discuss with Division Council and Staff Supervision performance and legal issues associated with the employment of employee T18-43 under Virginia Code 2.2-3711-A1 and 8. I need a second. I second. Prince William County uh, discussion, sorry. No discussion. Prince William County School Board will be re-entering closed session and will return. We have to call the vote, Madam Chairman. Oh, we have to call a vote on this. Okay. Uh, we need a vote on this. Um, let's vote. Thank you for that reminder. Oh, I, I, I logged out of board docs, but I'm going to vote yes.
The vote is five yes, two absent, Williams and Ralston. Motion passed. Prince William County School Board will enter closed session and return in approximately a half an hour.